Hey everyone, today I'm going to be going over how to do Mythic Argus as a Restoration Shaman. Mythic Argus is a three-phase encounter that is quite similar to the heroic variant of the fight. You'll see the only major change to phases 1 and 2 is the addition of Sojaris' Fear and Sojaris' Rage. Phase 3 is where most of the encounter changes happen, but let's first go over the beginning of the fight. In Phase 1, you'll want to maximize Cloudburst Totem by lining it up with Tortured Rage casts. In order to do this, you'll need to preemptively cast Cloudburst Totem such that it times out just as the Tortured Rage cast ends or a few seconds after. The easiest way to do this is to cast Healing Rain then Cloudburst Totem immediately after. From here, you want to cast Cloudburst Totem on cooldown for the remainder of the phase and detonate it early when needed. Cloudburst Totem comes off cooldown. It lines up nicely with the third Tortured Rage of the fight. Make sure that with these early Cloudburst Totems, you are using Ancestral Guidance or Ascendance to maximize the healing of your Cloudburst Totems. On my first Cloudburst Totem of the fight, I use Ancestral Guidance, while on my second Cloudburst Totem of the fight, I use Ascendance. The rest of Phase 1, you'll want to make sure you are getting sufficient casts of Gift of the Queen fed into Cloudburst Totems when available, while collecting the Gifts of the Sea or Sky depending on which stats you favor. There will be some Tortured Rage casts you are unable to cover with the Cloudburst Totem. Try to supplement healing during these periods by putting in 3 minute healing cooldowns from your other healers as well as your healing tide totem. The way the fight timing works out is if you cast Cloudburst on the first Tortured Rage, you can use it on every odd cast of the spell and miss out on the even casts. This is only applicable to phase 1. Once the boss reaches 70% health, he will transition into phase 2. During this intermission, heal the tank and anyone with any dots on them. Remember to DPS during this downtime. This intermission lasts quite a while, so use this time to drink a mana potion if needed. In phase 2, one healer will always be targeted by the soul bomb when it is cast. When the boss casts just two soul bursts, one of the two targets will be a healer. Be prepared to run out with the tank on every cast since a healer with Sargeras' rage cannot be targeted by either one of these mechanics. There are some push timings that cause the fight to bug and apply the Sargeras' fear and rage after the soul bomb target is already selected. Be prepared to have some alternative plan to deal with this on the fly. What we decided to do was if a healer got targeted with rage after the first soul bomb was applied was to have the healer leave the tank and the two soul bursts to separate and go to either side of the room and have the bomb still go to the back of the room. From there, the tank would stand still and the healer would come in at the last second for the bomb detonation to be absorbed by the tank. You will want to push this phase slowly to prevent an artificial enrage caused by an apocalypsis module spawning later in the fight and wiping your raid. Be prepared to deal with many soul bombs and many soul bursts. Try to maximize your cloud bursts by placing them as the soul bombs and bursts get applied to the raid. This allows you to charge the totem by healing the dot damage on the raid, as well as the explosion damage before the totem detonates. For pushing at a good pace, save your 3 minute cooldowns if you're going to be healing the first chains in phase 3. If you notice that your group is consistently pushing around the 4 minute 15 second mark, the latest you can use a 3 minute cooldown safely is around 3 minutes and 30 seconds. If talented into APT, don't be afraid to use it, as you will want it to be up for the last set of chains in phase 3, which is over 5 minutes away. Here you see I used my APT as I was out of position and got hit by a scythe. Phase is all about soul bomb and soul burst management. Upon reaching 40%, the boss will start his 1 minute roleplay, so be prepared to sit tight. You'll want your raid to mass suicide before the boss kills you to get your potions off cooldown right as you spawn. The easiest way to do this is to use the Sargeras' rage stacks to just instantly kill your entire raid. At the start of phase 3, DPS the boss as much as possible once alive, before kicking end of all things. If wearing a Pantheon Trinket, cast one healing spell to help DPS get an empowerment proc during this downtime. You should also use this time to refresh your health stones if needed. You will then want to get to the wall to dodge sights. Consider using a Warlock Gateway to get to the wall faster. When the sights spawn, whichever scythe spawns first will be the first set that shoots out. Make sure you're in a safe spot as getting hit by one is almost certain death. If you stand about two yards off of a scythe, you'll be safe from both scythe sets without having to move. After dealing with scythes, spread out, deal with Sargeras' rage and fear, and then immediately stack up to bait an apocalypsis module that's going to spawn underneath the boss. As the first module dies, start preparing for the first set of Sentence of Sargeras. As a Resto Shaman, you can solo a two stack of Shattered Bonds. To do this, cast Cloudburst Totem as the chains are applied. Break the chains as soon as you can. Make sure that if someone has a fear debuff, that they are ferried out. Use Healing Tide Totem as well as Ascendance and AG. Immediately cast Spirit Link Totem and cast Gift of the Queen on the majority of the raid. Make sure Healing Rain is down and then spam Chain Heal on the people who have Fear and Healing Surges on the people who have Rage. As the second module dies, prepare for a second set of chains. You can choose to suicide here as a raid or you can suicide one set of chains later. 
Both of these sets of chains should be handled the same way, regardless of which set you suicide. How you handle these chains is up to you, as this is where the other healers in your raid would use their large cooldowns. On our kill, we decided to break one chain and have our holy priest cast divine Him, and then let the other chain expire and have our holy paladin cast our mastery. The fourth set of chains is the most important, since living this means the fight is basically over. You are going to want to hold these chains until your 3 minute cooldowns are ready. Also worth noting that this is where your bloodlust will be coming off of cooldown. Consider holding these chains for their full duration to maximize the overlap of your cooldowns with bloodlust. You are going to cast the same cooldowns on this set as you did on the first set. Make sure that you are in range for Ascendance's 20 yard healing splash radius. Also, try to avoid eating rent souls, as this will likely cause a wipe. After stabilizing from the fourth set of chains, prepare for the last set of Sargeras' gaze. One last set of chains will also go out at this point. It is very important that these chains are not broken as there are no more healing cooldowns to keep the raid alive. Make sure you focus heavily on healing these targets. If you can keep them alive, you should have a kill. Alright, and that's going to do it for my Mythic Argus Guide. Thanks everyone for watching, and be sure to check out the full written guide on AncestralGuidance.com. Also be sure to join us on the Ancestral Guidance Discord, linked below.